And we're live. This is a lawless and an ill-starred kingdom. It has no time for justice or the law, but everything is bought and sold for money. One wastrel plots and schemes in such a way that great and small all openly defend his villainy and his immoral case. Without a care for truth, without a thought for consequences that their vote brings with it. These folk don't understand the cancerous harm that the degeneracy of their young people does their republic. They have set a price on virtue and on shame. When one's amongst them, it's nigh impossible to practice goodness. They ruin homes bring states to destitution, then cause their downfall. Troy, you'll see in time. And by their own example, they corrupt great numbers with them. Look at how they're followed by hordes of spongers growing fat as hogs through constant indolence and overeating. You think that any of, these, of this herd is able to serve his country, wear a suit of armor? when even silk's too heavy for their shoulders? Do sentry duty when they've learned to snore till afternoon? Withstand the enemy's blows when endless drunkenness has sapped their health? They think they're different and they call for war. God grant me always men like this to fight with.
eternal sun, and you abundant earth, and you expansive sea, and all you gods, both high and low, be now my witnesses. The thing that I was asking for is just. I wanted satisfaction for an insult and a great wrong, yet I got naught but laughter, which merely made for more ear feeling that mighty gods, I now commit to you my hurt and my resentment. If this plea comes from a spotless heart, avenge this insult, this gross misdeed, let Paris in my clutches, so that my sword may feed upon the blood of this base man who in his turn is sated on my disgrace and thrives on it today. O white-winged swimmer of the sea, sir, hewn from the beaches found in plenty upon the summit of Mount Ida, craft that delivered smooth-faced Paris, son of King Priam, by salt sea lanes to the Eurotus gleaming fordways. What sister-in-law did you bring here for our great monarch's noble daughters? For Polyxena in her virtue and for Cassandra the prophetic? One that's pursued here like a slave girl, fleeing her masters? Surely this isn't Venus's present. From the beginning, strife and discord branded your marriage, son of Priam. O oh, mighty Venus, stop me wanting things that are not mine. Grant me only one kind companion, one true bedmate. Those who want more still let them ask it. There have been many led to error by their eyes craving. Those, however, who can entirely curb their longing, they'll go on living long and safely. Soon it will come, soon. The time when bandit will find bandit.
Your Highness, I have loyally advised you that Helen should be given to the Greeks so as to douse the torch of certain war as fast as possible. And yet my counsel carried no weight, in consequence of which I warn you in advance that there will be a great campaign that wars a certain thing as surely as I stand before you now. You heard the way the envoys bid farewell to you and all of us. The border chieftains have written saying that the Grecian fleet is nearing all us. There can be no doubt. They're coming here or else why send their envoys? Or speak so sharply of the wrong they've suffered. Don't wait before we lose all of our coastline. Make sure our ports and border fortresses are suitably provided in advance with men and rations. Tell the vassal princes to be in readiness. Ensure the soldiers are set for battle. Send out spies. Keep watch on land and sea so that the cunning Greeks don't catch us napping. This is my advice. My good Antinor, you seem as frightened as if the enemy stood here before you. Best to be frightened now, Your Highness. Fear makes one more provident and well prepared. Later, there'll be no time to think. Just fight. Or run away. There'll be no other choice. I mean to take good care of everything so that we're not reduced to sudden flight. May God forbid. But who's this woman here? Her hair disheveled and her face so pallid. Her limbs are trembling. She can scarcely breathe. Her eyes roll and her head tilts. Now she's silent. Now tries to speak. This is my luckless daughter, Cassandra. I can see Apollo's spirit has seized her as it's wont to at such times. A person cannot choose, but has to listen. Oh, why do you torment me to no purpose, cruel Apollo? You gave prophetic powers, but not the gift of being understood. So all my auguries fly in the wind. No one will give them credence any more than empty fairy tales or fleeting dreams. Who will help me with my heart bound up in chains? Who will stop my memory from vanishing? Who needs this alien spirit in my mouth? I fight in vain. It is imposed on me. I can't control myself. I'm not myself. Dear Lord, where am I? I can't see the light. A sudden dark has fallen on my eyes. I see... I see two shining suns. I see two Troys. I see a graceful hind sailing the sea. She means misfortune and she heralds ill. Shepherds, defend the shoreline. Don't allow this fateful visitor to ever land. It is a wretched land and wretched shore where she'll arrive. And wretched is the glade she'll enter, laying down her slender form. Her, all her footsteps, everywhere she sleeps, must run with blood. Fire, ruin, 
devastation she carries with her. Oh, my lovely homeland. What end is waiting for you? You, my brother, shield of our homeland, guardian of our house, Thessalian horses threaten soon to drag you around the walls of Troy. And if our father wishes to make a burial of your body, he'll have to pay the murderer with gold. You priceless soul, with you the homeland died. One grave will cover both of you together. And you as well, cruel trafficker in corpses, You'll fall as well, the cause of your demise. An arrow fired by an unmanly hand. And what horse is this? Towering so tall over the battlefield. Take my advice, don't lead it to the stable. It kicks and bites. You ought to burn it, rather, if you don't want to die in flames yourselves. Sentries, watch out. A suspect night is coming. A mighty blaze will burn, a fire so great. Things will be seen as if the sun were shining. But on the next day, nothing will be seen. <laughs>